Welcome to Bike Bike Nudge Nudge. In this video, I'm going to review a road that was redone to improve the biking infrastructure. When I mentioned on Macedon that I would do this video, it was suggested that I show the wider context so viewers can see what leads into this redone biking infrastructure. So, I'm currently on a multi-use trail that leads to the redone section. This trail follows what used to be an old train track. The big strip mall to the right was redeveloped from a brewery, rail yard, and warehouses. But, despite the trail existing when the last and most significant part of the redevelopment was completed, this trail just dies behind the strip mall. This blind corner sidewalk is the official connection to the redone biking infrastructure. Part of the reason for redoing the bike infrastructure are these painted bike gutters. The redone section used to have one bi-directional protected lane on the north side of the street. These painted bike gutters were added as single direction lanes on both sides of the street. There was no special treatment at the intersection for people on bikes. We're now entering the redone part of the biking infrastructure. It is not quite complete as the paint and some signs are missing. I filmed this video on the 26th of November, seven months after the work began. The section being redone is only 1.5 kilometers long. As you can see, there is a single direction protected bike lane on each side of the street. There are some small gaps for water drainage and large gaps for driveways. There are also large gaps where the bike lane will be nothing but paint and will protect short-term free parking on the sidewalk. Now, there are a lot of gaps. I'm noticing some of the driveways, some are not. This is one of the first really great separated parking. So let's keep going. So again, the bike lane isn't officially open, and I guess there are no parking signs here, but people are still parking on the corner. We have now entered a small park that is being used as a modal filter. Only people walking or biking can pass through. There is some green space and a small player area. The bike lane exits the green space along a driveway that had to be maintained due to existing entrances for indoor parking. East of the small park, the bike lane continues as before, except there seems to be more sections that will be paint than protected sections. Again, we have a big long stretch here where we have a driveway, but they're trying to preserve just a few spots for parking. So this is really poor. We are now leaving the redone section. As context for the surrounding area, this protected bike lane also changed from one bi-directional lane to two single direction lanes. In 500 meters, the protected lane will end at an LRT station. You need to ride on sidewalks to actually reach downtown. The redone street is better for biking when heading west as there are no bike lane protected grade separated sidewalk parking spots. Heading this direction the bike lane is actually a whole lot better because there is no sidewalk parking protected by the bike lane. But I want to show you one more thing about the wider area. There's the major north-south corridor into the city. I'm ending the tour by showing the connection to the south and some of the best bike infrastructure in the city is through the parking lot on the university campus. I'll summarize my thoughts now about the new bike infrastructure. Let's start with what's great about the street the modal filter. The park allows people walking and on bikes to pass through while drivers will have to go around. This should keep traffic volumes lower, which means a safer street for everyone outside of an SUV. Also, the modal filter isn't just a small barricade. It's nice to have a little park with grass and a small play structure. The good aspects are the stretches of the street with an actual protected bike lane and that the city fixed alignment issues with a painted bike gutter to the west. The city also redid the bike lane to the east, so now there are single direction lanes on both sides of the street for this entire corridor. Since the street is still missing some signs and paint, 
A few aspects are yet to be determined. We'll have to see if drivers quickly figure out the very nice brick sidewalk is there for them to park on. We'll also have to see if there's a conflict between people walking and biking through the park. As of now, there is no differentiation or separation between the sidewalk and the bike path. Conflicts could result in my city requiring people riding bikes to dismount and walk through the park. My city loves their dismount and walk signs. It should be obvious that even mediocre bike infrastructure shouldn't have dismount sections. Now, what are some of the bad aspects of this brand new bike lane in my opinion? The lane was built to a constrained standard of 1.5 meters. This is too narrow for riding socially or for passing. This is disappointing since the street was completely redone. Then again, my city's standard standard is just 70 centimeters wider, which still isn't wide enough for social riding and passing is still a squeeze. This video is getting long enough, so I'll skip my editorial on which modes of transportation have generous standards that are never violated and which modes have suggestions that can be ignored if all the space is already claimed for SUV traffic. Another bad thing that could have been avoided since the road was redone right down to its foundation was the drainage. My city gets snow and freeze thaw cycles during the winter. These gaps were left to allow water to get to the drains in the gutter. During freeze thaw cycles, this water turns into icy speed bumps across the bike lane. I'm not a civil engineer, so I don't know if the drainage could have been made better since the entire street was redone, including its foundation. This redo wasn't just a quick resurfacing. You can also see where snow plowed onto the dividing curb has flowed across the bike lane, leaving more icy patches. I'll add three more little bad points. First, the drainage gates are not oriented correctly, though I think they're still small enough as to not be a major problem. Second, the connectivity beyond the street isn't great. The east ends with sidewalks where people are allowed to bike, the south doesn't have signs yet to direct people through a parking lot, and the west only has a painted bike gutter that has weird blind corner sidewalk connection. And third, this reconstruction started on the 24th of April. Over seven months later, the 1.5 kilometer stretch of road still isn't complete, and it's probably too cold for the city crews to complete the road markings before the spring. I know summers are short here due to the 13 months of winter we get, but it seems all bicycle infrastructure projects are finished a week before the snow falls and covers the road markings. This creates a lot of confusion for drivers and people riding bikes, and that leads to bad first impressions and overall worse impressions about bike infrastructure. Finally, the new street has one colossal failure. The bike lane protected, grade separated, short term, free parking. I realize there are North American cities that still paint bike lanes in the door zone because they really don't care, but my city makes a big deal that it was one of the first North American cities to adopt Vision Zero, dropped minimum parking requirements, and has recently committed $100 million to active transportation infrastructure. The city was publishing promotional material over a decade ago, telling people on bikes how bad the painted lanes they had just installed at that time were. No city that is serious about Vision Zero uses just paint as protection for bikes and intentionally places people on bikes in the door zone. The parking spots are for parallel parking, which will require drivers to stop and reverse in the bike lane. The parking spots are also limited to one hour and are free, which will mean lots of turnover, so lots of people stopping and reversing in the bike lane. The parking spots are also protected from pedestrians on the other side by bollards, which will prevent the usual Alberta parking technique of going nose first and driving up onto the curb. No city that dropped parking minimums as a measure to deal with car dependency and climate change should sacrifice the safety of people biking for free street parking. Including these few parking spots was likely only done to appease businesses nearby, but again, the city no longer has parking minimums, so shouldn't be providing free on-street parking. There's street parking right in front of the businesses and large parking lots for the university. Other street parking just a few blocks away costs $3.50 an hour. From what I've heard talking with other bike advocates, there was huge pushback against the parking. It appears that the city admin staff didn't listen. That brings me to my final opinion. For that, I'll have to tell you a little allegory that was told to me by the departmental member of my PhD committee. Imagine yourself having potlucks with a group of friends all the time and you always bring barbecue meatballs. Everyone loves your barbecue meatballs. But for the next potluck, you decide to bring chocolate cake. Half your friends cannot wait to have your chocolate cake. Half your friends tell you they're so sad they won't get the barbecue meatballs. So 
you compromise and make chocolate cake with barbecue meatballs baked inside. That sounds disgusting, and no one at the potluck will be happy. In my opinion, this street is now meatball chocolate cake. Drivers will like that the free parking was maintained and no travel lanes were lost. They won't be happy about the modal filter and that parking is less plentiful and more confusing. I'm not sure what people riding bikes will be happy about other than a better intersection crossing in the west. The previous bi-directional lane was protected for the entire length of the road. They may not be happy with the odd route through the modal filter and the painted door zone might completely prevent some people from using this route. The city put things in this reconstruction for both drivers and people on bikes and ended up with meatball chocolate cake. I hope you enjoyed this review of some brand new bike infrastructure just built in my city. Please consider liking the video if you would like me to review other new bike infrastructure. And leave a comment with your favorite meatball chocolate cake recipe for the rest of the community to enjoy. Thanks for watching.